Last week, I made five animations and all of them have one thing in common. They were made using curves and geometry nodes. Through making these animations, I found out how powerful curves are for making really amazing motion graphics. So today I'm gonna to show you how to set up curves and how to edit them to get a really interesting design. And I'm gonna show you how to get geometry notes to communicate to the shading to get really beautiful visual effects on top of your curves. So with that being said, let's do it. So to get these animations started, you have to start with a base shape that's going to hold all of your instances. In my project, I either used a circle, a line, or a square to be the holding base object for all of my curves. Then you're gonna instance your objects on the points of those base objects. In this case, I've been using a quadratic bezier. Now you can start with a little bit of fun by using textures to change the way that these curves are going to look and behave. I'm typically doing two things. I'm either using textures to create these unmoving structures, or you can use textures to animate the curves themselves and create the movement with those textures. Every time I'm either using one of two node setups to create the displacement that the textures create, and those are always getting plugged into a set position node. Now, this is a relatively advanced video and I'm skipping over a lot of steps in this project overview. If you wanna see full step-by-step -step tutorials of each of these animations, those are available on my Patreon today. All four tutorials total about 60 minutes of training where you can learn how to use geometry nodes and curves. No skipping steps, it's geared toward beginners and intermediate users. It's really cool stuff. If you wanna check it out, that's linked in my bio and you can get 10% off if you subscribe annually. On these two animations, the displacement is happening on the Z axis. So the displacement is getting plugged into the Z of the combined XYZ node. On this one, the displacement is happening on the X and the Y, so it's getting plugged into those sockets. And on this animation, I'm using the other displacement node setup because I had to displace it along the normals. And for the quadratic bezier, you have to realize instances in order to get the displacement to work, so don't forget that. All right, now we can throw some geometry into the mix. I used one of two different shapes to create the geometry, either a circle, which is gonna kind of create your tubes, or a line, which is gonna make more flat geometry that you can then extrude to get your thickness. Next is what I'm calling effects, or sort of stylizing things when it comes to the shading, shaping textures, and all of that stuff. I'm calling them effects that really help you with a little bit of style for these animations. One effect was I created a simple little mapping setup, so for these wires, I was able to squish in the texture to give the wires a little bit of their own individual character because of that texture, really giving those chords kind of a mind of their own because the texture is a little bit more zeroed in on each one of the wires. Now, a little bit ago, I mentioned base objects that are holding our curve instances. You can also add effects to those. So for this kind of string animation, I was actually able to take the base object, displace it so that the kind of origin point of each string is actually randomized, giving it a little bit more of a realistic, possibly kind of organic look. And to me, I much preferred it that way. Now, another effect that really took me quite a bit to figure out was trying to randomize the radius of each of these wires. So basically, I had to create a simple attribute setup with a noise texture plugged into the radius to be able to randomize it. Otherwise, it would displace the chords in still a pretty cool way, but not the way I wanted. So now we have random radius on each of the curves. Now, everything I just mentioned were effects that were applied to kind of the geometry or the curves but now let's go into the shading where we can get geometry nodes to speak to the shading to create some really beautiful effects. On this animation, the wave texture was the predominant texture that created some of the shading movement. Now, by default, when the wave texture is applied to this scene, it's not really gonna know that these are curves and really know what to do, so it's just gonna map like it's a flat object. So we need to go right before we added the geometry and geometry nodes and add a spline parameter attribute so that we can pull that attribute in the shading and essentially create a proper mapping so that now the wave texture recognizes what's going on and can map and animate properly. Now, the Realize Instances node, which was required to get the displacement to work, also created a bit of a bump in the road. Now by default, the shading isn't gonna be able to recognize that there are individual instances in the scene. It sees it like it's a solid object, so we have to use an attribute to send that data back to the shading. 
So right before the realize instances, we're gonna use an attribute, plug some random data into that attribute so that we can use it in the shading. Now there are quite a few things in the shading that we can now use with this randomness data that really makes this look beautiful. I was able to use the randomness data to create a very simple setup to be able to select which curves can actually have the wave and some that don't have the wave. Then you can expound on that setup to create an effect that allows you to have some strings lighter than others, giving it a really beautiful an organic look. Now this right here is my favorite thing of this entire scene. Get a wave texture and plug another wave texture into the phase offset. By default, it's not going to work the way I want it to until we plug the randomness data into that wave texture. Then all you have to do is get a math node to strengthen that effect, and then you can animate and loop that motion, and it creates that phase offset in a random way and creates this chaotic and beautiful movement. You can also use this randomness data to randomize the color of each curve, because by default, the noise texture is just gonna spread across it, but with this randomness data, it's gonna treat each curve individually and apply a random color to each one. And you can also use this randomness data as a mask to mix surfaces. So in this one, I was able to mix a metallic and a glass texture to really make something really, really cool. So there you go. That is how you make motion graphics using curves and geometry nodes. And honestly, this just scratches the surface. When I was doing my research, there are so many avenues and styles and really cool things you can do with curves and geometry nodes. Again, if you wanna check out these step-by-step -step tutorials of each of the examples that I showed in this video, that's available right now on my Patreon and you can get 10% off if you subscribe annually. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned some really cool tricks that you can apply to your own animations and I'll see you in the next one.